Hi guys, today is Sunday, October 1st, 2017. It is my five years on T. Real quickly, I want to let you know, if it looks like I'm looking up this way, it's because I'm trying to keep the glare off my glasses. <laughs> and if I look like I'm looking down a lot, it's because I'm reading a script. And I, because I really wanted to, I wrote it all out, and I just really want to get everything in there and not just kind of ramble. So, like I said, today is Sunday, October 1st, 19, 2017, and it is my five years on T. I wanted to do something special, uh, a bit, bit more special for my five year, because it's a big deal. I thought about putting together clips of my video intros from my pre-T to now, but the problem is I just can't figure out <laughs> how to do the editing of, of the YouTube video. So I thought, well, maybe I'll put a montage together of from a baby to now. Um, but like I said, I, <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. So I'm going to probably work on that for later. And uh, so here I am just talking to the camera again, which is probably okay. You know, most people just want to see a person just talking, not reading a script. After this talking session, I might do a little bit more. And uh, like I said, I wanted to show the beginnings of each of the clips of the videos because I wanted you to see the change between my my physical change and my voice and all of that because I enjoy going back and looking at them because it's like whoa <laughs> um, okay pulled up the wrong page um, I'm gonna start out with a timeline of events in my transition in 2000, at 48, I found out what transgender was and realized that was the answer to I, how I had felt my entire life. The confusion by me and others over my gender. July 1st, 2012, at age 60, I made the decision to make the transition. I made an appointment with a surgeon for chest surgery and I have discussed the reason in earlier videos again why I waited so long. August 1st 2012 I started having to see a therapist who would evaluate me and give me permission to have my chest surgery and start testosterone as part of my transition. I had to do this prior to seeing my doctor who would take care of my transgender health. Uh, September 20, September 1st, 2012, I proceeded to find a doctor who would take care of my transgender health. That was a long process before I finally, finally found someone, and also I discussed this in prior videos. September 24th, 2012, I had my first appointment with the doctor to discuss my decision to transgender and he sent me for lab tests to have my health evaluated to see if I was healthy enough to start hormones or cross hormones as they call it, which I was estrogen based and I was going to be taking testosterone. So there's, they fight each other. In my case, at age 60, I had already finished menopause. I had actually finished it back when I was 50. So uh, I didn't have that problem that most guys have with the two hormones fighting to see who's going to take charge of things. October 1st, 2012, I saw the doctor again. My health was good and he approved me to start testosterone. I then got my first shot, my first T-shot, which is a red letter day for us guys. After that, I saw the doctor weekly for my evaluation and T shot. October 25th, 2012, I got a court ordered legal name change. Another red, red letter day. November 1st, 2012, I got a driver's license with my legal name change. 
I also got my social security account changed. After getting a legal photo ID, which was my driver's license, I was able to start changing my name on all my legal documents, such as banking, credit cards, health insurance, home and car insurance, property title, on and on. The ladies who have been married and have had to change their name know the process of changing your name on everything. The, the older you get, the more your life history, the more there is to deal with and change. Just about the time I thought I had thought of everything and dealt with all of them, something else would crop up. I'd get something else in the mail or I'd get a telephone call and you go, oh yeah, that too, okay. And all of it requires time and money to go through the process. January 21st, 2013, I met with a surgeon who would do my first chest surgery. January 22nd, the next day, I had my first chest surgery. September 9th, 2013, I got the letter from my doctor indicating I had met and completed all the criteria and clinical treatment to have my gender marker changed from female to male. Big day. September 17th, 2013, I got my new driver's license with my gender marker changed to male. I now have on my driver's license a M instead of a V, instead of a V, instead of an F. I think most cisgender don't even know that that little letter exists, but we do. September 28th, 2013, I started the long process of getting a new passport issued with my legal name and gender change. I waited till I had had both of those done because it is a long process and I just wanted to do it, go through it all at once. November 26, 2013, which was almost two months later, I finally got approved and received my new passport. Two months of a very long and drawn out process that was costly and stressful and definitely discriminatory against transgender individuals. Many trans men and trans women often give up because of the stress and money needed to do it. And I think the government does this for a reason to, to discourage us from doing it. April 30th, 2014, I had my second chest surgery to have a revision because the first one was botched. Again, talked about it in prior videos. July 5th, 2017, I had a tattoo done of a transgender design I first created on July 7th, uh, July 7th, 2013. It was the one year anniversary of my decision to transition. It's, it's Salish design, which I love, and it's in native culture, we're considered two-spirit, male and female. We've lived in both, we're called two souls, tri, tri, twin souls, twin, twin spirits. And what it is, it's like yin and yang. It's parallels of the two of the two things. And I created something that looked like water because I see the transition like a stream. It's a it's a transition. It's moving from one place to another. So uh, I'd been inking it on daily for four years just making sure it was something I wanted done permanently. It marked, the fifth, it, mar it marked the fifth year of my transition, and I love to wear it and look at it. it. Just It just feels so good. And it feels good because I designed it. Uh, it didn't come from somewhere else. It came from, from inside me. October 1st, 2017, which is today, 
It's five years since I started my physical transition. The surgical process is over, and the last several lab tests and checkups have been near perfect. I have gone from monthly, then three month, now six month checkups. There are rapid physical changes early in the first year, but after that, the physical transition continues to happen because every cell in the body evolves from female to male physiology for trans men. The transition takes a long time. It is not done quickly. The body does not change rapidly. There is usually a lot of noticeable change, physical changes the first year and often earlier. It depends on the guys. On average, the minimum time required to change your physical sex is about two years. And that's about the best case scenario. Often the process can take three, four, five, or more years. Some guys talk about still feeling changes 10 years out. In some ways, the process never really ends. Each year that passes, one still changes a little, even after surgery. I'm still feeling slight changes that other people don't notice, don't see. My skin texture has changed. Um, my skin used to be very, uh, it, was, it was different. The skin texture was different. Um, it used to be when I gave myself a shot, the needle went in like, what do you call it, knife, hot knife and butter. And now I poke in it and the skin kind of depresses <laughs> And finally, the needle pops in. <laughs> and there's guys that talk about they used to really look forward to that shot. And now some of us go, oh, it's that day. <laughs> but you want to do it. So you do. Uh, in general, one can expect to be more or less living as the appropriate gender after about two to three years. Even though we all change at different rates, a lot of us pass or are seen as accepted as male within a few months. That's the way it was for me. I, I really was accepted very rapidly. People that didn't know me accepted me as male very quickly. The, the people that already knew me said they saw the changes, but they knew I was transgender, so I think they weren't. I don't know, they saw it differently. But out in public, for the most part, uh, people that met me for the first time, and afterwards, uh, when I told them to say, wow, <laughs> I only saw a man, I didn't see a woman. So the five-year anniversary is a big day for me. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cry. It is a big day. I have passed through the major, major physical milestones and now continue with the long process of psychological transition. Just about every day is a new socialization encounter and transition. Cisgender individuals are born into the gender that society accept them as and that they feel comfortable as being but and they gradually they learn they gradually grow into that from birth they're they're socialized as males they feel male they just move into it naturally but some of us like myself at age the trans started the transition at 60 and i'm now 65 have to continually learn our new role in society also for me, since I was seen as a straight female, and I'm now considered as society as a gay male, I have, uh, and I'm getting mixed up, but I have always, I have always and still attracted to men. So I'm still the same person in my head. In fact, 
I, unless I look at a mirror or really listen to my voice, I, I just see the same person I ever was. Uh, so for me, there is no straight female or gay male. I see myself as a person that is attracted to men. It's simply who I am. So that has required my, my, my learning a new role in society. I think the, tra the transgender is not so much a new role. It, well, it is because I'm now having to learn to be male, whereas I was female. I'm having to learn to be male in society, and I'm also having to learn how to deal with being gay. Uh, for some, the physical transition, for some of the guys and women, the physical transition is the easiest part, but dealing with society is the hardest. My voice continues to get lower, which is great. I like that. <laughs> and sometimes, like when I first get up in the morning, it's deeper. And if I've been talking a long time, it drops. Uh, so my voice continues to get lower and crack, and the cracking is fun. <laughs> I, try, I try to ignore it, and, and I hear it, and I'm noticing it, although I don't think others notice it, although sometimes I'll have somebody say, what's wrong with your voice? I say, oh, no, nothing. <laughs> oh, just, you know, having problems today. Um, <laughs> where am I? I went off script. Um, my hair continues to recede and get very thin. Used to be, if you look at my earlier videos, very, very thick hair. Way down to here. No more. And I still have slight acne. I literally break out with something every day. It's not major, but there's something there every single day um, I have been asked if I have ever regretted making the transition and I tell them definitely no I wish I had done it sooner and would have loved to have done it when I was a young kid but back in the 50s and the 60s it wasn't common knowledge and I nor my family and friends knew what it was or how to deal with it. They just considered me a tomboy and they, you know, I just, I was a masculine female. I got criticized a lot for it, had to deal with all of that. But I finally, at age 48, I found out what it was that eased up. The, the problem but now I've achieved it I've achieved the transition and I'm so glad it's happened it just feels so natural to me I no longer have to be pretend to be female I don't have to try to be try to be female and then slide back into being male and then try to be female again and fit into what society feels I'm supposed to be. I can act, be the person, and the gender I truly am. And I had something else I wanted to say at this point, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, in one hand, it's been a very long process, but on the other hand, it seems like it just happened yesterday. And, and when I was 48, and at 48, it had been a long time of the confusion and, you know, what what the heck is going on? Why am I this way? Why do I, you know, what's wrong with me? And when I found out that I was transgender, all at once, that, that confusion went away and that ended that part of my life. But then I 
went through 12 years of trying to decide whether I wanted to make the transition because it was a big step. At age 60, at age 48, I felt I was too old. I felt like, well, you know, I put up with it this long, I can continue to put up with it. Um, and there was so much that I was going to have to change. Uh, there was just so much. That, there was family. There was my business. There was everything. I was going to be changing my name, my gender, all of the medical issues that were going to have to be dealt with, all the money that was going to have to be spent. And it just felt like it was too big. Like it was just too big a mountain to climb. And it felt like it was going to be easier just to shove it down and forget about it. You know, just, I can forget about this. But it never went away. I'd watch a video on TV or I'd watch something on the internet, YouTube, of guys that had transitioned successfully. And I'd feel so sad. And I'd be so jealous and envious of it. And I think, they did it, I can do this. But then I'd fall back and, and give up and say, no, it's too much. And so I went back and forth like this. I'd shove it down deep, try to forget about it. And then out of the blue, it would just pop back up again. <laughs> and just enclose me in all this sadness and the confusion. And one day I had watched a video the night before. I had a lot of videos taped and I watched one that I'd watched before of a guy that had transitioned. And I felt so sad that night. And I woke up the next morning and I told my husband who, who knew what, what was happening, what I was going through and he had told me, when you're ready, if you're ready, just say so, and we'll do this thing. So I woke up early, January, early July of 2012, and I got up, and I said, this is it. This is the morning. This is the day. I can't. I can't go through this anymore. And so as soon as I said that, as soon as I did it, I, it was like this load was lifted off of me. That's when I started contacting surgeons and doctors and making appointments. And of course, I then wanted it yesterday. <laughs> it was like, okay, I'm ready now. Let's do this thing. <laughs> but it took me six months to get the surgery. It took me July, August, September. It took me three months to get, to get the first shot. But then the process started, and I just moved through it. And as I talked about in previous videos, there were problems. There were physical problems. Finding a doctor, getting the right doctor, uh, the doctor giving me an overdose of testosterone, which really messed me up, almost killed me. The first chest surgery, the surgeon didn't know what he was doing and he botched it up. So a year and a half later, a little over a year, I had to go for a second surgery to get it fixed. So that was more uh, pain, more psychological fear of going under the knife again, more money, I think the psychological part, the, the fear, was, was hard. It was very hard to think. You know, it's already been botched once. What if it gets botched even further? I've already got scars. What if they're even worse this time? The doctor was really good. The questions he asked me, the, the moment he started talking to me, I realized he knew what he was doing. I really did know he was what he was doing. So now the, the surgery, the surgery's been, let's see, 
14, 15, 16, 17, a little over three years since that, that last one. Still got the scars, but it looks good. The placement of everything is proper now. And like I said, I discussed all that before. And the hormones are balanced out. So it's all good now. And uh, as I said, I just wanted to mark this day as a huge red letter day for me among among many and uh, so I'll talk to you guys later bye bye